options are did you hear the lady <laughs> okay so uh so then uh what i really feel is right now is having certain kind of know-how or knowledge you just take concepts and questions and sensations etc and create for example what you did with the documentary that is that that is probably a really interesting thing it can you can develop take things towards that area or delve directly in more conceptual or even practical investigation with the with the protocols and with the technology so i wanted to the other part that that jen mentioned in the beginning is that we actually I really would like to kind of explore a little bit how did how what do you think how did it feel opening a wallet and suddenly they're receiving some near how what question that created etc so do you want to talk about that mm -hmm. no i, I uh -huh. have some i already have some questions so if i understand well when you you um what you just said and or maybe I just suggest, or this is what you say, that, um, <laughs> that we might, each of us, uh, start with something and mm -hmm. document it and share it mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. like for mm -hmm. example, even if it's difficult. So personally, um, my objective is to, um, uh, um, to create some NFTs, Mm -hmm. This is what I started in June, okay? Create some mm -hmm. NFTs that actually, in fact, uh, uh, some tickets for a community that is going to, to participate to the production of the um, uh, um, um, secure uh, of the mm -hmm. darkness. Uh, I have the title in French of, of the Zone d'Obscurité Protégée. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I, I'm, I was talking the last Friday with this guy. We're starting now a bank based on the blockchain, more or less around sustainability and especially about um, uh, compensation, carbon compensation, CO2 compensation, something uh -huh. like that. So, um, and we were talking and so the, he, I mean, he was suggesting, which of course makes sense, that how much it's important that what you initiate online, you know, uh, that the community is more ju just just being people. So, for example, for, with thinking about NFTs, since I'm working about um, the filming intimacy with a camera, mm -hmm. uh, um, I will probably have some kind of. Um, uh, I don't know bytes of the code that is analyzed that is used by the camera uh, that is going to be uh, online. You know, I'm trying to think about how people are going to be uh, to feel as a community because the um, uh, general outcome, uh, the, the fact that everybody's going, the piece of work can also be the, the result of being having people together. Like if you have a puzzle and everybody has one puzzle to make it simple, okay? And and so um, uh, so I'm thinking about that now. I don't, have, it's not very clear, I, I admit. Uh, um, and so is it compatible with NIR? Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, okay. you you say the word NS, NFT, the 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 name of uh, one of the technologies, non fungible tokens. Okay, so we in the next session we will explore even how what what I normally suggest is do the simplest thing first: how to make an NFT with a JPEG. All right, so with a picture. So that's what we're going to do. The next week, for example, uh, Mariana uh, already has like this beautiful uh, visualization. You can take an NFT of that, and you know, a picture, a screenshot, and we we'll start exploring. Then I, I already have, I already have yeah. NFTs. Yeah. So from then, the last, then your main, uh, your main question, I think, and that's what we will be exploring, and you're exploring with your colleagues there, 
is how to translate certain affects and intimacy and notions of presence. You know, it's super complex. You know, what is presence? You know, so, and I mean, then- No, no, the question, I started to talk about, about intimacy, but basically to, I, I'm really mm -hmm. remain with this question. I want mm -hmm. to experiment how I can produce a piece of work, which yeah. means gather yeah. some support and funding to yeah. create. Mm -hmm. during the process that's and, yeah. and then and then the, the near community. answering your question the near protocol has a token that already works and is and is collateralized you know it's literally collateralized with uh in an economy like the dollar or the euro etc so in that sense my answer is yes all right. So then what we are going to proceed probably at the end of this is how to do a motion token in the near ecosystem. OK, because I did it, I created an Ethereum and Ethereum is, un, you know, unusable right now because of the gas fees. So what we're trying to see and we probably will decide, can we create a motion token that it can be our token for that stack? and then have certain kind of counsel in that we decide how much are we going to issue, et cetera, et cetera, right? So practically okay, we're backtracking so, a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, okay, then I, I, I don't want to monopolize mm -hmm. the conversation, but so the mm -hmm. motion token or the motion mm -hmm. rare or the variable token, mm -hmm. can I uh, use it on rare, on variable? on the platform rare, 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 I, don't know I don't know yes. i don't know yet uh, i really have to find out and on I open think sea? I, it's it's mostly used with mint base mint base we will know that in the next for example mint base is a nft platform that is connected to the in the ecosystem of the near uh, platform all right so ah, mint okay. base so it's not it's always used because, yeah. because, uh, um, but, because but for, it's very clear also, that being on the sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. no, okay, tell me. So, so it's not automatic that they're going to be um, on any kind of platform, no. Because I no, think with nothing, the motion, no. nothing is automatic. For example, like the the it, they're still very separated. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would, uh, you know, separate it in a way. Ethereum is here, and near here. Even if there is a bridge, it can be bridge, right? But uh, I don't, I don't have the answer for that. That is going to be part of the research. But what I'm going to do in the next session is introduce everybody to the NFT, very proven, stable platform that is uh, mint base. And I think as Steph has already things there, right? Isn't it, Steph? Yeah, in the in, in the near. But, <laughs> so the, yeah. So then let's. let's mm -hmm. Can can I interrupt you one second? I mean, let's be be, you know, like these initiatives with dance tech. It uh -huh. can be and it can be heard by people from platforms mm -hmm. like Rarible, where if we are able to be on Rarible, yeah. as a group yeah. or not as a group. We always yeah. get. We already gain some kind of recognition. You know that. It's yes. it's uh, yeah. it, it, so. I think yeah. it would be worth to try to yeah. be on Rarible. And well, my understanding from my conversation on Friday from this guy who mm -hmm. know the people from there mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that if we have something that is a smart yeah. that is community oriented, they're going to yeah. be open to get us. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, yes. I totally agree. For example, I am focusing right now using the near platform because I found it very manageable. <laughs> Second of all, they have funding, <laughs> right? Directly already. You know, that's the one that I'm using to send the, the, the talking to you, right? And, uh, and then they have all the ecosystem very easily to manage for you to understand the value flows that is the focus of the session today. You know, the, what I want you to focus today is to try to understand that that wallet is not just containing whatever is a token, it's literally a key to an ecosystem of different um, systems, of different protocols, all right? 
in which there is the NFT that is the most mainly mean base. There is the DAO that is the Sputnik DAO, all right? And there, there is a, a, a part as a system to create a token. So then understanding that the goal of the fourth session is that we can understand that flow. Now, it's never gonna be just one blockchain. It's literally a huge amount of blockchains. So then that's gonna be a war intelligence and sensitivity that perhaps one project you do in Rarible and the other project do it in Meatbase. However, you know, so then it will be different, um, different uh, ways of accessing all this different kind of flows, okay? But I, I hear you. And if you have a, a proposal, we can talk directly to see, to see what can explore, okay? So what, who else have, uh, because I really would like to enter directly in the content and uh, with one more question. It wasn't a, well, yeah, it's really quick. Uh, where is what Mariana made? I wanna see. It's in the, you see that there in the group, there I is the group. something in the group, it says documentary, the end of money. So I think at the end of, and you have to scroll down because Anne Morandian put a bunch of list of words, a list of long words, a long list of words. So then you have to kind of go towards the end of that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So cool. yeah. And, and that's, I invite you to explore it really this group because there is a lot of already really nice content there and what Raina uh, posted. So then, that is the, I'm just bringing you on scaffolding with the dance tech project. And then we will be deciding things in relationship to the dance tech project. Now, what you want to do with your project, boom, you can just go. And, and then we, it's like, we will have different networks that are kind of overlap like this, you know, in, in nodes. Oh, Mariana is doing this, Victor is doing that. And hopefully, and we may, cluster in one together, all right? And then we share the information. <laughs> for example, there is, a, there is a way, this is for everybody and I, you know, I don't know what Alex is not here. So Alexander from Colombia that you can actually create a project and ask for, for funds to a guild, create a guild. And then you say, well, I would like to visualize, for example, the whole near protocol. And then you do a visualization project, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it would be you, with what you do, you just plug, it, plug in and different kinds of, of processes. Uh -huh. So, yeah. so okay. I have a question yeah. regarding the guild because uh -huh. the idea, I mean, I, I, I mean, as we discussed, I really think that it's interesting that we are part of a community with each of us with our project and because we also discussed that then, you know, mm -hmm. like, for example, can people can be part of one group and then exchange with another group and this kind of stuff. But um, I really, I, I mean, my understanding today is that uh, this approach will help us create a community around our work, uh -huh. you know, or at least around one yeah. project, let's say. So does it make sense that we are ourselves and create a guild, you know, or should yeah. we be sub guild? I mean, what would well, make the most- Well, you happen? know, uh, let me just tell you what I know. I read about the guilds. <laughs> I read their instructions, what guilds are, meaning near protocol. Then I said, oh, I'm going to create a guild because they need a leader of the guild. So I'm following their construct. It's literally their construct. And then with that guild, I became eligible for funding. So then I go and talk to them. And I, so then I plug in the motion project into a guild led by me. So what I'm saying is, it's not a monolithic truth on how to do it literally you have, uh, it's a text to work, to figure out and to read between lines really, you know, because it's not very clear sometimes, but a guild is just a construct that this protocol is offering. They may call it collectives, whatever in another protocol. In the near protocol that I'm using because they're very sensitive to artists, really, you know, they love, they really have a, a, 
a guild that's called creatives, you know, so they know that, that we are important. So, and I think in that sense is, is, is what I am bounding it. And it's comfortable for me to say, dance tech is the main infrastructure of communication, all right? As a social network. Then we are using for these workshops, just the near protocol. Now, as a, if we consolidate each other as a, as a motion DAO and we will work together for four or five years or whatever, you know, that hopefully, then we can make choices and we may have a motion DAOs in different protocols. <laughs> so we have a motion DAO in, in Ethereum, we have a motion DAO, you know, and then you, we, and then in the future, there will be a way that the funds will flow from network to network. That's what's going to start happening. That then will be literally a, a network flow economy, not only within one protocol. That makes sense, more or less, or making more. This is what I imagine, you know, in my, that, that's what I have felt. All right. So, and then for us, what is the goal of this next recession? that we more or less are in the same place in what we understand, <laughs> that we have more or less a common language. And then we take it and run with it in whatever direction and always come back to, to each other to, for support, for uh, bounce ideas, to support each other. For example, I'm just gonna go back to the very fundamental thing that we did. I'm gonna share my screen. Da, 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 da. I have it here. So I'm going to put it in the desktop. Desktop two. Okay, so can you see the, 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 the website? Yeah? Yeah. So then in this website here, we go for the session one and session two. Okay, so we are in the session two. And then I feel like there are a lot of questions of stuff that we have spoken today in which uh, it will become clear that there are different technical aspects that we need to know to understand, for example, the near protocol. The near protocol, and as is Ethereum, the other um, kind of main networks uh, or, or blockchains, doesn't use the same way of energetic consumption that uh, uh, Bitcoin does because it has a different way of confirming the, the transactions, okay? But I wanna play you these this two videos that are really cool because, oh, I have to go back because I didn't do the, the stuff here. So these videos are one, um, are uh, really cool that explain with theater, with a theatrical representation, how a blockchain works. So, and I think it's really nice, it's this one here. Have you watched this one? No? And let me know if you have sound. When you wanna buy something normally, using your normal bank card, Can you hear? this is what happens. I give yeah. the card details to the shop, the shop asks the bank I need if to I'm hear. for the money. I need to hear if you're, do you have bank sound. checks its records to see if I've got enough in my account. Do you have sound? Like I can't hear you. Yeah, yes. You have sound. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> if I do, it lets the shop know. It updates its okay, records. Okay, it's going to go. Okay. Using your normal bank card, this is what happens. I give my card details to the shop. The shop asks the bank if I'm good for the money. The bank checks its records to see if I've got enough in my account. If I do, it lets the shop know. It updates its records to show the movement of money from my account to the shops. Oh, and it takes a little cut for its trouble. Now, if you wanted to remove the bank from that system, who else would you trust to keep those records and not alter them or, or cheat in any way. Well, I wouldn't trust you. I wouldn't trust you. In fact, I wouldn't trust any single person. But I might trust everyone.
The idea is you don't have a central record of transactions. Instead, you distribute many, many copies of this ledger around the world. Each owner of each copy records every transaction. So, to buy something using cryptocurrency, I give the shop my details. The shop asks all the bookkeepers if I'm good for the money. The bookkeepers all check their records to see if I have enough. If I do, they tell the shop and then all update their records to show the movement of money. So there's no way that a forged transaction can make it in. If I try to alter a ledger, it won't match all of the other copies. And it gets rejected. Oh, and one of them, at random, will be given a reward of some newly created cryptocurrency. This is how cryptocurrencies work. And remember, all of these bookkeepers, all of these ledgers, they're not actually people. They're computers. Lots of computers. Okay. So, um, let me just go back. Any uh, reactions, thoughts, questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe it's nice to elaborate a bit on the difference between proof of work and proof work of and proof of stake. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So the this is what we saw is the, the traditional understanding of uh, proof of work. All right. So there are these computers running, distributed, or cluster in farmers in farms, uh, server farms, and has, having a lot of hash computing power. And, and then they, I don't know if you saw the, the person say, oh, you know, I got the reward, boom. You know, this person got a, a, a reward that is how new cryptocurrency is created. And this is, this is kind of the basic uh, uh, architecture or flow. So then uh, proof of work is very, very related with high consumption of energy and of course, what is called the problem of scalability, meaning uh, the possibility of, of it's not possible for a system like Bitcoin to create, to process, let, let's say, the same amount of transactions that Visa is processing. It would be impossible. It will like explode. <laughs> you know, it cannot do it. Right. So then that is a problem that is right, been trying to be solved by another kind of proof, cryptographic proof. This is a crypto aspect of, of, of crypto economy, okay? So then I'm gonna play this video that exactly uh, try to explain this. This is a little bit longer, so bear with me, take notes, okay? Are the videos playing okay for you in the same, are they not stalling? Okay. Cool. Good, yes. Okay. I'm gonna, just gonna share the screen. Do, 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 do. Don't. Okay, and uh, again. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna do it again. Boom. Okay. Boom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Xavier, and you might have read articles online saying that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin uses enormous amounts of electricity to secure their networks. But why is that? And more importantly, what are the alternatives? Mining new coins takes a lot of computing power because of the proof of work algorithm. The idea was first introduced in 1993 to combat spam emails and was formally called proof of work in 1997. However, the technique went largely unused until Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin in 2009. He realized that this mechanism could be used to reach consensus between many nodes on a network and he used it as a way to secure the Bitcoin blockchain. However, the proof of work algorithm works by having all nodes solve a cryptographic puzzle. This puzzle is solved by miners and the first one to find a solution gets the minor reward. And this has led to a situation where people are building larger and larger mining farms like this one. 
According to DigiEconomist, Bitcoin miners alone uses about 54 terawatt hours of electricity, enough to power 5 million households in the US or even power the entire country of New Zealand or Hungary. This is, but it this doesn't was stop in there. Proof of work gives more rewards to people with better and more equipment. The higher your hash rate is, the higher the chance that you'll have to create the next block and thus receiving the mining reward. To increase chances even further, miners can come together in what's called mining pools. They combine their hashing power and distribute the awards evenly across everyone in the pool. So to sum it up, proof of work is causing miners to use massive amounts of electricity and it encourages the use of mining pools, which makes the blockchain more centralized as opposed to decentralized. So to solve these issues, we have to find a new consensus algorithm that is as effective or better than proof of work. In 2011, a Bitcoin talk forum user called Quantum Mechanic proposed a new technique that he called proof of stake. The basic idea is that letting everyone compete against each other with mining is just wasteful. So instead, proof of work uses an election process in which one node is randomly chosen to validate the next block. Oh yeah, small difference in terminology here. Proof of stake has no miners, but instead has validators. And it doesn't let people mine new blocks, but instead mint or forge new blocks. Validators aren't chosen completely randomly. To become a validator, a node has to deposit a certain amount of coins into the network as stake. You can think of this as a security deposit. The size of the stake determines the chances of a validator to be chosen to forge the next block. It's a linear correlation. Let's say Bob deposits $100 into the network while Alice deposits 1000 Alice now has a 10 times higher chance of being chosen to forge the next block. This might not seem fair because it favors the rich, but in reality, it's more fair compared to proof of work. With proof of work, rich people can enjoy the power of economies at scale. The price they pay for mining equipment and electricity doesn't go up in a linear fashion. Instead, the more they buy, the better prices they can get. But back to proof of stake. If a node is chosen to validate the next block, he'll check if all the transactions within it are indeed valid. And if everything checks out, the node signs off on the block and adds it to the blockchain. As a reward, the node receives the fees that are associated with the transactions inside this block. Okay, but how can we trust other validators on the network? Well, that's where the stake comes in. Validators will lose a part of their stake if they approve fraudulent transactions. As long as the stake is higher than what the validator gets from the transaction fees, we can trust them to correctly do their job. Because if not, they'll lose more money than they'll gain. It's a financial motivator and holds up as long as the stake is higher than the sum of all the transaction fees. If a node stops being a validator, his stake plus all the transaction fees that he got will be released after a certain period of time. Not straight away because the network still needs to be able to punish you should they discover that some of your blocks were actually fraudulent. So the difference between proof of work and proof of stake are quite significant. Proof of stake doesn't let everyone mine for new blocks and therefore uses considerably less energy. It's also more decentralized. How is that? Well, in proof of work, we have something called mining pools. Those are people who are teaming up to increase their chances of mining a new block and thus collecting a reward. However, these pools now control large portions of the Bitcoin blockchain. They centralize the mining process and that could be very dangerous. If the three biggest mining pools would merge together, they would have a majority in the network and could start approving fraudulent transactions. Another important advantage is that setting up a node for a proof of stake based blockchain is a lot less expensive compared to a proof of work based one. You don't need expensive mining equipment and thus proof of stake encourages more people to set up a node, making the network more decentralized and also more secure. But even proof of stake isn't perfect and it also has some flaws. Now you might think, hold on a minute, if I buy a majority stake in the network, I can effectively control it and approve fake transactions. And you would be correct. This is called a 51% attack and it was first discussed as a weak point of the proof of work algorithm. If a single miner or group of miners can obtain 51% of the hashing power, they can effectively control the blockchain. Proof of stake on the other hand, makes this attack very impractical depending on the value of a cryptocurrency. If Bitcoin would be converted to proof of stake, 
acquiring 51% of all the coins would set you back a whopping $79 billion. So the 51% is actually less likely to happen with proof of stake. But that's not the only risk. Proof of stake algorithms also have to be careful how they select the next validator. It cannot be completely random because the size of the stake has to be factored in. But at the same time, the stake alone isn't enough because that will favor rich people who will get chosen more frequently, will collect more transaction fees, become even richer and thus increase their chances of being chosen as a validator even further. There are a number of proposals to fix this, like coin age based selection for instance. Another potential problem is when the network chooses the next validator, but he doesn't turn up to do his job. This could easily be solved by choosing a large number of backup validators as a fallback. In short, proof of stake brings additional risks when compared to proof of work, and a lot of research is needed to understand these risks and then to mitigate them. Alright, so now that we know what proof of stake is, what benefits it has, what risks are involved, let's take a look at real world usage. A few examples of coins that use it right now are Peercoin, Lisk and NXT, but more cryptocurrencies are likely to follow in the future. Ethereum for instance is working on implementing a proof of stake system which they call Casper. It's currently deployed on the Ethereum testnet and is actively being developed. And also the Cardano project has long been working on creating a provable secure proof of stake algorithm that they call Ouroboros. More about that in this video right here. So that was it for this video. If you liked it, give Okay. <laughs> that was it for this video. Any questions? <laughs> what do you think? I, I think that this idea of, of um, the blockchain as like secured and neutral is totally uh, fake. Yeah. yeah. So question all right so is this all true you know the idea of having something that is a utopia a solution uh-huh and there is alejandro coming now <laughs> yeah and then uh then you have yeah that then you have this perspective of this specialist saying hey even proof of stake that it says it's going to solve this problems you know security or uh even the possibilities of um uh, influence on governance and making decisions for the majority it can just you know it, it, so then that's kind of a, and this is a two years old video so in a way <clears throat> you know the it may be more updated information but i think it explains really well the two fundamental uh cryptographic strategies of of making the systems work and yeah i mean the so, other the other thing for me, it's also the crypto technology itself. I mean, uh -huh. this is also evolving as well. So mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, they, whatever these networks are doing now might not yeah. be the best thing in, in five years or 10 years yeah. or quantum computer coming up and saying, oh, crypto, boom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm gonna eat the crypto for lunch. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. And, and you know, the, the main, I think goal for a three session, four session workshop is that you know that there are some strategies to prove a distributed system. The main thing is the combination of, in cryptocurrency of this kind of economy is that you have a peer to peer system that is a distributed system. Uh, it has existed for a while. You know, you have, uh, you know, Napster and a lot of the peer to peer. Uh, you know, uh, social networks or networks of of uh, video, you know, etc. And then, and then the technology of distributed system here, and then cryptographic proof to make it safe. So this is the main thing is happening is this kind of joining these two fields in something that uh, to have the possibility of exchanging value. You know, so so that's kind of the main shift, and for us to know. So far, there are these two uh, kinds of uh, uh, strategies that are coexisting. Bitcoin works fully in proof of work. And, and the, the hardcore Bitcoiners are saying, we're going to stay like that forever. And it's going to be scarce and no change is going to happen in the protocol. And then you have 
this in fo protocols focusing on innovation and solving the problems that is kind of the second generation and third generation of protocols that is from ethereum cardano and you know and near is probably a third generation that are very taking care of a lot of the ecological footprint or at least they are concerned <laughs> you know um so then you know i'm, I'm aware of the time and uh, I would like to, this is pretty straightforward what we're gonna do. You, I'm gonna show you the near wallet, okay? So last week I presented to you a thought that the big main particle of an economy is decision, is a choice. It's, it's not even money, is how I decide this or that, you know, how I, and we also talk about the possibilities of how money can be beautiful, how money can have certain ethics, you know, that is still a very kind of question in the background. So I think that just having the possibility, and this is a possibility of that we have a wallet, Okay, and in this case, let's call it a door, a gateway to some kind of system, all right? This way. So then I can, what can I do with this? For example, there is, this is something that I've been accumulating and putting and getting some near and put in here. And I'm, you know, publicly just putting this here, all right? So, I can probably say, this is just example. Oh, wow, you know, I really like what uh, X, Y, Z person have done in this workshop. So I'm gonna send to this person, you know, certain amount of one near, two near, three nears, whatever. It doesn't have to uh, convey uh, uh, the, the quantity, of course, may, may express certain kind of value for us. Okay, so then we can choose uh, the wallets of this person, you know, in our thing. There are some that are posted in here. In, uh, right, so what I'm trying to convey is that we can, oh, within this, eco this ecology, within the system, you can say, okay, I'm just going to, probably send something or not, okay? The other thing that probably you can have in your mind is like, is this real money? How do we do this? How, how do we use this? So then, for example, this is a situation, for example, for certain kind of countries, we can um, decide to get another wallet, Okay, so you can get another wallet, for example, KCoin or Trust Wallet. Actually, it's, it's fun. It, it has it accepts near and accept Bitcoin, etc. And then you can actually trade your near for Bitcoin, right, or for any other token. And then, for example, in Venezuela, you can say, okay, I have this money, and I'm going to. Uh, send it to someone that is going to sell the Bitcoin and deposit Bolivars <laughs> in my account, all right? So I know that a lot of people is doing that. So I'm just trying to kind of tell you that you are entering in an economy that you can actually uh, flow with uh, different kinds of value. The other thing that you can do, of course, is explore. Let me just go back here. <laughs> Um, this aspect um, that I, you have heard the word staking. So staking is actually, I'm gonna show you with my wallet, is that you actually, probably you have experience in the traditional banking that you can have your savings in, uh, in a savings account and they're supposed to gain some interest. This interest is actually some kind of benefit because the bank is actually doing something with this money, okay? You're actually lending the money to the bank, okay? So in a way, this is kind of a very basic fundamental aspect of 
financial um, understanding, all right? So, so that you have a balance in this case of near, and then you can stake some of these tokens. It's like when people say nothing is a stake, all right? So it's like you can actually put some of this token as a, as a way of putting it to work within the systems and you would actually have, uh, these are all the, 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 the pools that actually you can stake and you see that they charge certain fee annually, all right? And uh, so this is the, a, a fee. And then you will also know uh, in a way if you select it, in a way if you select it, if that they will be certain kind of reward. And the reward normally has to do with certain kind of percentage that of, of your validation of how you, so then you, in this case, what you are doing, you are becoming a delegator. So validators, is this is part of the proof of stake. You are actually collaborating, kind of contributing to the system, kind of putting your money there and you can always withdraw it, <laughs> right? And then, uh, and then, you know, you are kind of making in this way, uh, the network stronger. So then there is a very nice uh, presentation of here. So what, what can you do? You can just be a holder. <laughs> meaning you don't do anything with it, just leave them there. You can be a delegator that is, will be putting it as in stake, or this is a more uh, complex aspect, more involved in which you actually have your computer uh, validating and connecting to the network. So that's a kind of in a way how you are participating in a peer-to-peer -peer system, okay? So in a way you can, that I was trying to say, okay, you can share with someone, send to someone else who's receiving, can receive near. So then you can also hold it, not to do anything with that, just keep it there, <laughs> all right? And it will fluctuate the value base in, in of course, the, uh, the supply and demand. And then also you can delegate it, that is literally just going to stake, probably you can say three, <laughs> tree uh, uh, near and then this is the process that you are uh, compromising or including your computational power okay in the delegation power and the delegation you are literally just putting some funds there and if you can get uh, more information about how much would you gain or the yield that you will gain and uh, there is normally from 10 to 15 percent a year, okay? So let me just go back to see your faces. <laughs> this is kind of the, the part of like, we're talking about money, okay? So an economy has all these financial tools. The very fundamental aspects of this that now that you more or less know how it's working. So you can actually say, oh, I'm just gonna keep my stuff in the wallet. Or you can say, oh no, I need bolivars, <laughs> all right? Or, so then I'm kind of showing you more or less some of the, or I need pesos, whatever. So then you can go from this wallet to another wallet, uh, what is it called, uh, trade, uh, trade it or exchange it from another. That's what, I, also there are different kinds of exchanges. And then you are outside of the near ecosystem. And then you can go to Bitcoin, whatever, and then change it to pesos or whatever, okay? or send Bitcoin to someone else or, or Ethereum. So then the other thing that you can do is just keep it there and it will fluctuate. You will see it was nine when, when we used it last week and then it, today, I don't know how much it is. Uh, let me see. Um, the, this is just about the near. Okay, it's 746 right now. Okay, but when I started using it, it was 4.5. Okay, so, so then, um, yeah, that's one. The other part was uh, the staking that is literally here in your same wallet. You can say, okay, I'm going, let's say I just gonna stake three. So then you just go here, you choose uh, uh, one of the stake my tokens. I normally use 
one that is called Ever Stake. It's just, I kind of know them or know them online and they're very reliable and they have a lot of material. Or, you know, they are really public. We know who they are, you know, their faces. <laughs> so, and then you can do this. And then the other part that's kind of more complicated or more complex is when you actually enter in the system, putting your uh, equipment at, at the service of the network. That's what is called a validator. That's what was the goal today, all right? So then you can make choices with that, all right? So, and it's actually choices that have to do with value. Then you can make your uh, token be expressive of care of value in the people that you know the network or you said it's yours, you know, it's used it however you want. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I have, uh, because if you want to be a, a validator, mm -hmm. um, what Im implications to, to um, yeah. Yeah, safe of your uh, computer that data. Yeah, it's it's not not a problem. You know, like a, it's a very secure system for the equipment and your data. Mm -hmm. It's not viral or anything like that. It's literally a huge protected system. All right. Mm -hmm. So there is no no issue. The main I forgot to mention when you become a validator. I probably you saw in the video that there was like this burning thing if the validator actually tried to cheat. So mm -hmm. then uh, you need, you put a, a, in stake, you actually need to have a certain amount of mm -hmm. near mm -hmm. to become a validator. So that mm -hmm. kind of creates a threshold. That's an investment. You put your equipment, but you also have, I don't know how much it is right now to, if any of you know that you, you know, to become a validator of near. So then you actually have to have an amount. And that, and that is literally blocked. You cannot take it. That's the difference between a validator and a delegator. You can become a delegator just right now, put in three, and whatever you, don't, you need them back, you just take them back. And it takes one or two days because the validator needs to take it out from there. So it takes a little bit of time, okay? It's 56 hours or what is called epochs. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah. So I don't think that there is a risk for so far the you know the date in your computer uh yeah so i i have not done the validation process i know that you need to in near you need to know certain programming you know mostly with rust and then uh mm -hmm. do a lot of command line stuff to be able to have your uh system going they have it great as difficult you know this is difficult and okay. the delegation is very easy. <laughs> yeah, okay. at least what I—that's what I know. Yeah. Any other uh, question, Steph? Yeah, um, uh, uh, mine was Steph similar to. Mm -hmm. mine, mine was similar to Mariana's. Uh, yeah, what what does imply? What does entitle to become a validator? I'm reading about it. I just found the web page. Uh, yeah. The near protocol, yeah. and and I mean that what will be I will be interested in doing. The question will be if you know. If this yeah. has any implications of electricity, like uh, like if I no, no okay, it's literally like running your computer. Have you leaving your computer on? Right. Yeah. The, the, so, the, the video card is not going like crazy. No. Okay. okay. Not that I know, you know, but I know that there are a lot of groups there, and they you will see that there is a validator Telegram. <laughs> So, and then you okay. can ask a lot of those questions. But what is important for us is like, we understand that there is this different ways of being part of a network. What are we right now? We are holders of NIR. It can be any other token, right? We're NIR holders. So then being a NIR holder, it's like a dollar holder, whatever. So you can just transact. That's the basic thing, right? Or keep it there and it will fluctuate. The other thing that you can do is, oh my God, I need money. So how do I take it out? So then you just cash it out or whatever. So then, uh, then you can think about investment in a way as the very traditional way. Can I get some interest with this? That's what, how I compare it. Instead of having the money in the bank right now, I have a very volatile currency now because it's volatile. So then 
uh, that would uh, give me some yield per year, right? So then I actually had like what I was given like 1,000 and it had like five days and it made like two years, <laughs> like five days. So that's a lot. So anyways, so my uh, proposition for you is in the next two weeks, explore this. You have literally 10 near there. And then you can say, okay, I can need, I'm gonna send this to someone. I'm gonna let this sit here. I'm gonna stay and check it out to see how it is. So imagine that this would be a money that we could have designed, all right? Because that's what I'm doing this exercise. What if the near is the motion token? You know, what is the near is our money. So then we can express value to each other, kind of the main thing. We can keep it there. We can also, uh, probably start thinking about other stuff that you may want to do, okay? So, or stake it, you know, with, uh, and I always, you know, that's how I have learned. I just, okay, I put one there to see how much it is and then to see what it does. And then after a while, say, like, oh shit, I lost it or whatever. So, so, but then try not to risk your whole thing. So just like put 0 0.5, right? Something that you feel safe about that. Any questions? Yeah, uh, I, I have this kind of question, which has to do with uh, since there is already motion token on the Ethereum chain mm -hmm. and certain value, if I checked it on uh, Uniswap, so it has some value compared to Ethereum. But my question yeah. is how now that I have like a few nears. I'm very interested how I can play out the exchange ratio between motion and near. Yeah, yeah. But the, something yeah. that is not <clears throat> well, no, we we will be delving into that towards you know the next one that we will have work with the tokens with the NFTs and this one. And you know, Steph, that's a question. One of the main issues, and it's what. You know, the, the, this is for everybody. The motion token was literally issued by a platform called Roll on the Ethereum network because I didn't know how to do this. You know, literally, it's, oh, I did it from the beginning. Then I learned actually how to do it myself. So then what I'm trying to say is like what I'm thinking is like we will have, I would think how I see it coherent is we need to reissue motion in the near platform. Then we get into one of the exchanges and add liquidity through, through the near platform with the nears that we have. <laughs> All do right. You, so, do I understand mm -hmm. it correctly that you're saying that instead of of using the minting that is happening on the roll, like uh -huh. how most is minted on roll? Your plan is not to bring those into near through the bridge, but instead. Well, I did. Let me show you. Again. Do you see? Uh, so, but but the, for everybody, are you look at this. You want to mint it again? You want to mint yes, because and, and motions on the near. Look or, at this. Or, Can you hear me? Yeah, but uh, I, I don't understand what you're. What you Did you get my question? Like. Yeah, what I what I brought all through the bridge a bunch of motion to this to the to the near protocol, and I don't okay. freaking understand what happened, really. So this is four yeah. million motions, and I have it here, and I have to talk to someone to have to solve this problem. They are here, but so I don't know how to access bring it them. Through the, you worked with Aurora to bridge it from Ethereum network to near network i i did and i follow all the instructions and uh and then they're here so i think it's solvable but i need some coaching about this you know so to tell everybody yeah. so then so then there is this near motion created a literally a crypto currency created in ethereum near has something that is called a bridge to actually bridge Kind of they wrap around in another smart contract your currency 
and then you manage this in this protocol. So that's what I try to do. But I try to do it right now here, and uh, and it doesn't show. <laughs> it shows the amount, but it doesn't. I don't know how to take it to send it to anybody. So I, if that is not solvable, there is no problem, I guess, because we will issue as the owners of this process, <laughs> we can issue motion again through the platform that we are uh, using okay so that's okay. um no, no that's, that's and it's good it's good that you don't ask because it's i feel like holy shit it was my fault actually instead of sending a hundred i send the whole thing the for me <laughs> and then they're gonna keep the, uh, the thing is uh role is gonna keep sending me every two months i think two hundred thousand motions right that's the the what are you know we, we're a millionaire but i cannot use those millions so then they're stuck there so i think but what i have learned first of all you never do that send the whole thing because actually i learned that that bridge is still experimental so it's really is it's in beta so it's not <laughs> it's not very reliable anyway the rest of the technology that you are using there uh, they are you know but Anyway, so that's kind of the story of this so far. I'm gonna see if there is a, a solution. Yeah, any question? Yeah, Thoughts? then this, the second part of my question is then if if there is a, the experimental issue with Aurora Bridge, um, if the motion is minted within near, how does that actually work? Yeah, I, I think that that's what we, well, if we create an economy, okay, that works within the near protocol, I don't see that there is a problem. Because for example, I have already exchanged near to Bitcoin and Bitcoin to dollars and no problem, okay? So that means that that's actually cashable, right? So within, I don't, within the near protocol, we're fine. And it's very cheap for us to experiment and learn, okay? And what I think is really advantageous is it has connected the DAO, the Sputnik DAO. The DAO is the decentralized autonomous organization that we will uh, work on that for the last session, that it will be a formal invitation for you to be part of the DAO, literally. And then we can actually uh, vote and you know, do the governance aspect. You know, that, and if, if it will be a decision in the same way that you are deciding right now if you're gonna send this or not, et cetera, all right? If you have any questions about each other's wallets, you can actually send a message through the group to the whole group, all right? So say, hey, uh, I need the, your wallets, and then you send it to each other, okay? If you don't find them, find them in the comments. The wallet means the private key, that whole you know name, um, any, uh, any other question, Alex or Derek or, yeah, they know. No questions at this time, just a lot of information Derek. to process. Sorry, you're <laughs> off video, but my battery's, Is that me talk cool. and listen. Okay, cool, <laughs> you're there. Uh, Mariana. But I have, uh, it's not a question, it's a proposal <laughs> or uh -huh. also a question because, I'm very uh, visualizing uh, uh, focus uh, people, person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I need to see everything uh, together to understand yeah. in one own graphic. And then, um, you know, the platform Miro, that's like yeah. a ca open canvas for a group uh -huh. where uh -huh. each one can write comments or put mm -hmm. videos or put um, pictures or then, um, it makes a collage, yeah. a, a whole canvas. Um, I have think maybe we could do mm -hmm. together with our inputs. Mm -hmm. Great. And it could be also a, well, an artwork at the end. Yeah. Because it's mm -hmm. a canvas. But uh, I don't know if I like to use 
uh, mirror or maybe yes, but because there are a lot of programmers uh, here, maybe someone can yeah. program one open canvas for our group. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. I can I cannot yeah. do it. <laughs> but maybe someone Yeah, you probably do it. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I totally agree. That can be uh we can all think about it and let's say that in the comments of the second session you can make suggestions. You know, uh I think mm -hmm. we can start with something uh open and free. Probably I don't I don't uh, let's just do some research and uh and do you do you envision that is something that is visualizing the process plus the concepts and all that? Uh, and Mariana, kind of like uh, visual, visualizing the concepts and or, or mm -hmm. the like a cognitive map, like a mind map kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So, and I'm just gonna bring back this image. I I totally agree, and that would be really good. So then. Any suggestions, let's put them in the second session and we will have two weeks. So here, you know, I this was my attempt to create more or less uh, uh, some kind of mapping in which here is a token world, token and cryptocurrencies. Here in the right is like the notions of the NFT or the, this is the non-fungible aspect. Then there are, all this aspect of decentralized finance that we are learning. And it, all this is connected. It's connected with the tokens. It's connected with this uniqueness of experience. It's connected with the people in general, whatever a community of practices. And here is the decentralized autonomous organization. You know, I can move this stuff around. You know, really doesn't have to be one in the center, right? And, and I put it here just as a kind of a vision. But definitely, and then you have the whole rest of the world, all right? The whole economy, you have the dollars, you have the euro, you have the, the art uh, world, and you have uh, your local community. So, you know, so that is literally, the, it's gonna be the task, how each one of us grounds these ideas and knowledge in whatever project you want. My idea is like November and December, would be, I'm gonna ask in my guild some funding for projects. So then you would probably say, I wanna do this. And then we can say, hey, yeah, there's like 500 years for projects, whatever, I don't know. So then we can probably think about that, that hopefully you would have an opportunity as you will have if you want to do it, in the beginning, you can go directly and apply with your guild, with, with a guild, or go and I said, hey, we will have four grants in which there will be this amount of near. You know, one of the main aspects of this is for me, at least I think, is how to understand how it works in the real world. You know, literally how this have a very direct impact. For example, I don't know if you wonder, uh, wow, but the near is going up and down, right? <laughs> so that means that it was a hundred dollars. Now it is sixty. Okay. So, <clears throat> but then in the I'm gonna just you're just gonna show you the ecosystem that the near protocol has. Of course, it's not as big as uh, Ethereum. Let me just show you here. But for you to understand that or for us to start understanding that there are certain possibilities of even creating what is called stable coins. So a stable coin is to create a token that is either pair, it, it, it can be pegged to certain other currency. You can say, well, I'm gonna create a motion and we're gonna create a motion, but it's gonna be one motion per dollar. <laughs> it, it will have to be decided. How are we gonna fund it? Oh, perhaps we're gonna invest our near. So, you know, so then there is a way of doing that. And then there are projects coming along. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here. And if you have, of course, better ideas, this is how you, more or less I'm figuring this out, but 
All right, so this is a website that is part of the NIR uh, project. And then there are all these projects uh, that, for example, this is decentralized finance. MinBase is the one that uh, works with the NFTs. This is actually exactly like uh, Uniswap in the Ethereum world. Uh, for example, you can go to the DAP here. And uh, so it gives you the possibility of literally trading the near directly for USDC, right? So, so then, you know, there is a lot of things that we need to learn. And, uh, but one of the, the stuff that I wanted to kind of show you is that possibility of kind of, let me just go back. Okay, so that there are, in this, so all this uh, already kind of cl classified, pre-classified DAOs. And then if you go to DAO, you go to the Sputnik DAO, and then you can also go to the website of the Sputnik DAO here. And then you can launch the app. And if you look in the right, I'm actually sign in with my uh, near wallet actually I'm connected here with my near wallet and I'm gonna go and say motion and then motion here it, this is the motion DAO in the Sputnik DAO that is actually running in the blockchain and what are our funds need here for the session today 104 near that were given to me for September so then at everybody who attended today you will receive 10 near from these funds that I have to actually said, yes, make a proposal. This is all the pay payouts that have been happening here. And this is actually from the one for last week, okay? So I just wanted to show you that is operating. <laughs> and then in a way that, that, that literally we're navigating different smart contracts <laughs> that are uh, part of the near ecosystem. And, and that will be a whole possibility. Try to understand how to uh, create the value flows of, let's say a token, and then and how they, we will use it, okay? So any other thoughts, questions? Yeah, I have a, a specific question on, on exactly this part. Uh-huh. Can the transdisciplinary DAO in Sputnik become mm -hmm. member of Motion DAO or? Uh, I don't know. I don't even, I, I think that it's, uh, I, I have the coaches from the near platform. I'm gonna ask. I know that they will, they want in the future, for example, you can be a member of different DAOs, <laughs> you yeah, know, have, with uh, the same wallet. I have different accounts, but I was wondering if it's also yeah. possible to have a, a structure of the DAO be member of another DAO, or is it is it the DAO with different accounts that become part of a DAO? The, I the, know that that the DAO exists as a smart contract, so with a hash, with a long, you know. So then that is part of it in the blockchain. So then if that DAO has certain amount of funds, right? That are sent by whoever is managing funds from someone else. So literally you can send funds from any kind of wallet and from another DAO to this one, zoom, right? And then from here, make choices and say, okay, this is gonna be distributed like that or a certain way, more or less what I said. Next step will be to invite two or three of you to be part of the motion DAO. And I don't know how to do it yet, but I know that it's very simple, but it needs to happen in the next two weeks. All right. So then you will be part of like a council and then you decide and they say, hey, let's, okay, Victor is working on, in new software or Mariana is doing this with Victor and they're gonna work to create that visualization. So then, then we can say, okay, they're gonna get paid, you know, 25 years each, boom, boom. We decide when they do the work is paid like this with no banks. <laughs> so, so then 
then you get so then we get the idea of this the the DAO what is it so then that's those questions Steph is going to be part of the the interoperability of different protocols you know between the protocols between the networks for example the protocols as such the blockchains plus the the these are called dApps or the apps you know uh, decentralized applications that's a lot of names right decentralized applications so all that we're going to be start figuring out right and uh and you can join any of those DAOs. <laughs> you know the the other thing is i think that that's something that i'm still kind of waiting to see how participate in another DAOs, etc but i think it's as easy as just joining so anyway uh well it's a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah mariana mariana are you there okay <laughs> she's there come back very soon yeah so any other questions reina alex hey hello sorry for my late <laughs> um, i confused the time here in colombia uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I am very interested to share this uh, near uh, protocol and near uh, ecosystem with my eco my study group about the blockchain. Uh, try to invite in uh, to explore it. I, I want to explore the staking of uh, about mm -hmm. the validator too. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to experiment with this, but. For me, it's very important to learn about the DAO. It's very important mm -hmm. to yeah. uh, learn about this. I am very open for this topic and try to share them in Platoero. This is very, great. So I am very open mind, try to understand more, but I am very happy to with this experiment. That's really great. Yeah, well, you know, Let's say that I'm very nomadic, so I don't have a home that I can say I'm gonna have two computers running, all right? So then you, you know, we can define, we can actually become a validator cluster, all of us. So, you know, and then you can say, okay, there is this validators going and then that's, but I, I don't know yet how that works. The other part is that there is a possibility that everybody who has their own project, meaning their own communities of practice, whatever you're doing, you can actually go and become, you're a leader of projects. You can just connect directly to, to NIR, you send them an email and sign up as a guild leader. And then immediately you can say, yeah, I'm from Colombia, da, 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 connected with Marlon. And then you just go and apply to get your monthly community thing. <laughs> that are funds that the maximum is 2000 years they are giving 2000 a year per month so so then that's i think really good information <laughs> so if you have a project the funds are there you just go and communicate with them directly and then they have people who actually chooses to uh, normally they're loving loving projects that are creative so then they have a infrastructure to do this so so that's mm -hmm. part of the learning process you know or the mm -hmm. the sharing of this process yeah that not everything has to be done through here so here we are a group of people thinking and exchanging but then you're like okay you're just gonna do that and you can connect in different ways as a network yeah, yeah of course yeah. nice cool yeah. yeah, um, um, I mean, besides the mirror board or some sort of visual thing, I need, I think we need a glossary. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's a whole language here. I mean, yeah. I'm meeting the near uh, through yeah. uh, staking. Oh man, uh, what, what did you just say? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, well, that's exactly how it is. So, so the glossary today will include proof of work, proof of stake, validators, delegation, staking uh what else you know those are things that are actually all in the internet 
because right, it's, right. It's, it cannot be more self-referential. Guilds, uh, bounties, uh, what else? Because they yeah. hold it and they... <laughs> the holder. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try next Saturday to dive into yeah. this validator thing because uh, I have a bunch of computers laying around, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and uh, so I can try doing this yeah. uh, and setting up okay. a validator for us. It will be yeah. an hour validation. That's, I'm that's gonna really try. Cool. I'm gonna try. Cool. Gonna try. Yeah. Cool. And if any of you, for example, Reina, if you need information on how to transact in Venezuela, you let me know because that's how I help my family. So. So then, I just want to, I just have to digest all this first. Yeah, yeah. Let's digest all this because it's really a lot. I have no idea. I mean, yeah. I had to put yeah. my own time, uh, into yeah. my own journey uh, to, to digest. And to yeah. But no, I mean, uh, about exchanging for, yeah. for, I think there is no, I mean. No hurry. Yeah. No, I, I think I, I just want to yeah. understand a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, yeah. But I want us to feel comfortable talking about money. Okay, there is nothing shameful of uh, of feeling that we can need help. All right, and uh, or that the economy is a uh, economical aspects or financial aspects is something that we may be interested. So then that's what I really want to be very open about this. And, uh, and then we are here in different geographies with different histories of colonization, with different histories of racism, you know, the whole catastrophe, all right? So, so then we have to be aware of that, that we are really dealing with a shit. And then, you know, we may do art, we may, but definitely the main thing, at least for, for this group is taking care of each other. You know, there is something that, that is at least part of the ethics that I try to put out there, that is a generosity and sensitive, you know, and that's how we express care. So then, then, you know, there is something there that for me is important because it has been part of the precariousness that I have also lived as an artist. So. So then, you know, it's, it's, it's a reality of how to, you know, you get some fun, how to make the best of those funds, you know, why not? So then DeFi, Decentralized Finance, and how we can create a cluster, it's almost like a co-op, it will be really interesting. And then, for example, if some of you have idea, it's like, okay, how can I create a micro loan thing, micro lending, whatever. So. So then there is, those are part of our creativity. You know, there is, okay, there is a micro lending process that we're gonna have every month, a hundred euro, a hundred near to, to actually give to someone. I don't know. It, but the main thing is that we all start kind of attuning, getting attuned with that we are part of, of, of the economy that is very personal, okay? So, Anyway, so that's all for today. <laughs> so I know that it's a lot, right? And, and I love that you're here and I'm gonna take another picture. And uh, yes, <laughs> yes. So, and I'm putting documentation in the kind of the, the, the DAOs uh, of, of the whole near guilds. They have a really cool thing that, you know, I'm kind of reporting about this every week. And then, on Saturdays, I'm having, let's put one hour, I'm dedicating Saturday at 11 for any kind of discussion, catching up, et cetera. So next Saturday, we will have uh, a session. I can, uh, you know, if you wanna meet, et cetera. It's not the, it's not the course session. It's actually, uh, uh, I call it office hours. <laughs> it's like, you just knock the door and uh, we're there and we chat, okay? So and I'm gonna send you the link for that. And then please take these two weeks to allow all this to ferment, to cultivate and you know, to see whatever happens. Um, then if you have ideas of visualization, that's very good. And then decisions about staking, holding, sharing, sending, et cetera. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>